David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today, I have for you something from my personal collection. It's a pen that I had been eyeing for a while because it filled a small hole in my collection. A rather expensive hole, but a hole nonetheless. Uh, as you are probably aware, over the last year I've had a number of pen projects, and while that has allowed me to get some extra work done in the house, that's kind of boring. So I decided to reward myself with this pen. And that pen is the Namiki Yukari Royale. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Yukari Royale, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about this pen. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. With this pen, I believe I have a complete set of all Pilot and Namiki sized nibs in my collection. So, uh, you know, during the size comparisons, I'm going to show you what they all look like together as well. Uh, if you're not familiar with the history of Namiki, back in 1918, the Pilot Pen Company was founded by two gentlemen, Masao Wada and Rikosei Namiki. The company was originally named the Namiki Manufacturing Company, but early on it was changed to Pilot. Uh, they chose the name as a tribute to their shared passion of the sea. Uh, they used the brand name Pilot, referring to a fleet's flagship. In 1924, Namiki was founded as an artisan offspring of Pilot. Uh, the company began by making pens from ebonite, but the uh, problem with raw ebonite is that it uh, was to change color and lose some of its shine over time. So, in order to solve this issue, Namiki began using Arushi lacquer to coat their pens in order to create a more attractive body and limit the deterioration of the ebonite. Okay, let's take a look at a pen. It arrives in this large box. Um, along with the box, you actually receive this packet. Uh, inside the packet, there is a use and care guide, um, as well as some uh, warranty information that you can mail back to the company in order to register your pen. Uh, and then also included was this DVD. Uh, this uh, homemade nature of this DVD kind of amused me. This is totally like a self-burned DVD. Uh, the thin case, the label on the DVD, um, even the back of a DVD-R is distinctive and looks different than like a professionally mass-produced DVD. Um, while this DVD was burned back in 2012, you can tell from the dates of the file it contains, the videos look like they were shot in the early 1990s and go into great detail about the Mackie and Arushi process. Uh, there's like 45 minutes of video on here. It's a bit slow moving compared to more recently produced content, but definitely interesting. At least I thought it was. Now, while it would have been nice to see some more modern video, by no means am I criticizing this DVD. I'm really glad it's included. Uh, it just looks and feels like it was created by like a low level intern whose job it was to burn a bunch of DVDs rather than something professionally produced like a marketing piece. Uh, looking at this kind of takes me back to the early 2000s and uh, burning tons of mixtape CDs. The pen comes in this very nice softwood box. Uh, the lid lifts off and underneath, I kind of like how you can get a look at the Namiki logo through this little cutout in the padding. When you remove the padding, uh, inside there is a polishing cloth and then we have a, a bottle of black ink as well as the pen. And here is the pen. This is the Namiki Yukari Royale. Um, I basically see this as being the younger sibling of the Namiki Emperor. Um, this is what it looks like in comparison to the Emperor. And you can see the Emperor is significantly larger. Uh, well, there aren't many other pens out there larger than the Emperor. Uh, they do share the classic cigar shape, though. Uh, this is the Vermilion model. There is also a model in black. Um, besides the size, the biggest difference between the Yukari Royale and the Emperor is that the base of this pen is metal, as opposed to the ebonite of the Emperor. The red exterior color of this pen is deepened by using a non-oil lacquer for the final coat and a polishing method which involves a process of repeatedly rubbing in raw lacquer after polishing the surface with a special charcoal. Um, I find the red on this pen to be just slightly deeper than the shade of my Emperor. I know it's probably tough to see here. Um, let's take a look at the top of the cap. Uh, it is rounded. And then this transitions into the traditional Namiki clip. The trim on this pen is gold plated. 
Uh, on the clip, it says Namiki, which is the only exterior branding on this pen. And then the serial number for this pen is located on the very top of the clip. Um, it's kind of interesting that this clip is identical to the one found on the much larger Emperor. Uh, and then at the end of the cap, there is a thin gold-plated band. Then a step down from the cap to the barrel is fairly small. The barrel is straight, tapering down at the end, and the very end of the barrel is rounded. The cap twists off in just under two rotations, and underneath we have a number 20 sized 18 karat gold nib. Uh, this nib is available in fine, medium, and broad. Um, I've always thought that the stamping on Namiki nibs looked really classy. I've seen some versions of this pen with a two-tone nib where Mount Fuji was in the silver color. Now, Pilot has their own proprietary nib sizes. This number 20 is around the same size as a standard number 6 Yovo nib. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, but the hole in my collection that this filled was now, I believe, I own pens with every available standard nib for Pilot and Namiki. And here's a look at the red plastic feed. The section is a rushi coated resin. It begins with a flare and angles up to a small step up to the threads and the remainder of the barrel. Uh, the pen is very comfortable in the hand. Uh, this really isn't an oversized pen. The cap does post and it does post securely. Um, I do find that posting throws off the balance of the pen and back weights it more than I would care to see. So I prefer to use this pen unposted. Uh, on top of that, I'm not a huge fan of posting my Arushi pens, uh, since that it has the potential to damage the material over time. The inner cap is lined with a felt to help minimize the potential damage, but I still prefer to be safe and use this pen unposted. This is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts proprietary Pilot cartridges and a CON70 converter is provided. With the metal in the section, as well as the metal interior of this pen, eye dropping would not be recommended. I mentioned this up top, but the Namiki Yukari Royale is a rather expensive pen. It retails at most sites for $1,500. What you are receiving with this pen is something that is beautiful and striking with a rather simple design. Uh, are there things that I would change about this pen? Sure. Uh, it would be nice if it were uh, ebonite rather than metal. And an ebonite feed would have been nice as well. But I feel that overall, those issues are minimal because it looks great. And as you will see in the writing sample, it performs nicely as well. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample, as well as I'll show you some comparisons of different Pilot and Namiki nibs. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Namiki Yukari Royale. Um, in regard to a couple of other Pilot models and Namiki models, here it is with the Pilot Custom 823. Then here it is with the Namiki Nippon Art series. And then here it is with a Pilot Vanishing Point. In regard to some non-Namiki Pilot pens, here it is with a Mont Blanc 149. Uh, here it is with a Sailor King of Pen in the Royal Tangerine. And here it is with a Pelican M1000. In regard to some uncapped comparisons with some other pens, here it is with the uh, 823. And here it is with the Mont Blanc 149. And here it is with the Pelican M1000. Okay, I mentioned I was going to show you the Pilot nib comparison. For that, I think we need to turn this around. We'll see how this works. And to begin with, we have the Emperor. And that is a number 50 nib. Uh, and then we have the number 20 of the Yukari Royale. Uh, and then in regard to Pilot sizes, uh, this is the number 30 in the Pilot. So, you know, let's actually reverse these. So we'll go down in size. So that's the 30 in the Pilot, and then the 20 in the Namiki. Then for the Pilot 845, we have a number 15. And on that Namiki Nippon Art Series, this is a number 
10, but that's the number 10 in the uh, Namiki. And then we have for this Pilot Custom 742, we have the Pilot number 10 nib. Then on this Custom Heritage 91, we have a number five. And then finally, on this Stargazer or Stella 90S, we have a number three. So that's a good look at all of the different uh, Pilot and Namiki nib sizes. You know, I always keep threatening that I need to do an overview on the entire brand. So one of these days I need to get around to doing that. Okay, here we go with the writing sample for the Namiki. Yukari. Royale. And this is a fine 18 karat gold nib. Uh, and the ink that I'm using today is one of my favorite inks to use in um, Arushi pens, but unfortunately it is no longer available, which is Franklin Kristoff. Terra Firma. This is what the ink looks like. Um, you know, it's kind of a brownish red that I would use a lot in a lot of my uh, Akatama Nuri pens. Uh, they've discontinued that ink, but replaced it with the Franklin Kristoff Arushi red, which it looks nice uh, coming out of the uh, the Emperor and this uh, Yukari Royale as well. And then this is what it looks like in regard to the Leonardo Nose Moscata. This is what the larger Franklin Kristoff bottles look like. This is probably about three quarters of the way full. Um, I've already gone through one of these bottles uh, and I'll be sad when this one is gone as well. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, this fine nib is interesting. You can get a decent amount of line variation out of it. Um, it does have a fair amount of feedback to it, a little bit of bite to it. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, I wish it was just a little bit smoother, just because, you know, I'm not a huge fan of fine nibs, but um, I do find that it's very pleasant. But it is definitely a Japanese fine. In regard to ink flow, it's decent. In regard to some reverse writing, um, it does work well. It is a little bit sharp, but lays down an extra, extra fine line. And in regard to some fast writing, the feed keeps up just fine. So there we have the Namiki Yukari Royale. Um, it's something that I'm glad that I've added to my collection. I think it looks really sharp uh, and that it performs nicely as well. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.